hadn't realized how much I missed the lap of luxury, and indeed the rest of luxury. There was never any time for rest in the army. Afterwards, I didn't find any luxuries in the southern village to which I was exiled either. As a hero of Cilantro, I was expected to work hard to keep our people safe. Hello, Wendy. As a lowly commoner, stripped of my wealth and titles, I struggled just to survive each day. Now, with little else to occupy me as I lie in bed, Memories that I thought were long laid to rest bestir themselves. I have too much free time here. No matter how I occupy my body, the ghosts of the past haunt my idle mind. Ooh. Grief ruined my appetite at lunch earlier. I only had seconds. I couldn't eat thirds. Maybe a walk will do me some good. It's around one o'clock in the afternoon. The sun is bright and the temperature is rising. Summer has arrived, and the fragrant winds that blow through the gardens cool me off and help somewhat in easing my troubled heart. But unlike in the woods or in the Roseland, the atmosphere here is tense with anticipation. The princesses who usually inhabit this part of the garden are not willing to bestir themselves before the party tonight. I spotted the fencing hall's dome earlier and decided I'd head in that direction. Sir, can you help me over here, please? That voice came from up ahead. Looking in that direction, I see a young girl appear from behind the door of the fencing hall. Hey, over here. Oh, let's, let's give her a voice now. Let's give her a voice now. Um. Hey, over here. Over here. She waves her hand wildly as if expecting me to pretend I don't see her if she's any less blatant about it. Judging by her uniform, this is the headmistress in charge of all the maids. Judging by her size and appearance, this is a prepubescent girl. She's supposed to be Japanese. How can you tell? She has to be the youngest maid I've ever seen. She can't see more than 13 or 14 summers. Salantra is the, uh, the kingdom that our hero fought for against Vaistra. Unlike the princesses I've met so far, she appears humble in both dress and demeanor. Oh, please excuse me, sir. She grows increasingly nervous as I approach, but quickly masks her anxiety behind a polite smile. I mistook you for one of the gardeners, Your Excellency. I would not have spoken so familiar had I realized you were the new fencing instructor. That's all right. I've been looking for something to occupy myself. Please adopt the position. Please allow me to assist you. No, please. I don't mean to trouble you. You're a real rise, nephew of the Emperor and apparently a Pokemon. I am just a maid in service to the Princess. Sizz, sizz, sizz. And you as well now. It wouldn't be right for me to ask for your aid. You haven't troubled me at all. Please just tell me how I can help. Well, if you insist. She points inside the hall. We want to wash the equipment in the fencing hall before your classes start. None of it gets used very often, so it collects a lot of dust. It all needs to be carried outside first, lest the dust we clean from the equipment settle in the hall. Oh, and the cod pieces need to be worn so we can wash them properly. Um. <clears throat> Itself. This equipment is heavier than a young girl like yourself can handle alone, no doubt. Well, all of my staff are girls. Then I insist upon you allowing me to insist. I, all right. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. While clearing out the storage room, we also find a grand piano behind the equipment that needs cleaning. That must have been a big pod. Pod. Uh, bah, uh. 
That must have been a big cod piece. I don't know about that, but I mean, his name's Rice. Right, you Rice. It just sounds like a Pokemon. It looks quite heavy, but the little maid assures me I only have to give her a hand. So I burst into applause. I soon discover her tiny frame conceals a powerful body. She's got it in one of her pockets. She lifts the piano straight up. She only needed me to keep it steady on the other end. What an embarrassment to my former profession. Here I am, a hardened soldier, and I'm being outdone by a child. After we finished moving the equipment, she insists that on thanking me properly. Who are I follow as she leads me to one of the many nearby gardens. Here is a picture of cold honey tea, and these are freshly baked cookies. Please accept them along with my gratitude. Oh, so that's what she meant. Ah, but this is far too great a reward for the small effort I put in. You did most of the work, after all. Are you dissatisfied? I can get you something simpler if you prefer. No, please don't trouble yourself further. Sweet tea and fresh cookies will make a lovely snack. I'm grateful. But as I was only your assistant, you must join me in celebrating a job well done. She sits down and pours her own tea. The girl seems nervous at first, so I sit quietly, sipping tea in an attempt to reassure her. Hmm, this tea she made is perfect. My curiosity is getting the better of me. You have me at a disadvantage, miss. You know my name, but I have not offered you have not offered me yours. May I have it now? Or indeed your name? She stills, and her face takes on a look of concern. I'm sorry, Your Excellency, but I can't tell you my name yet. You haven't been officially introduced to all the princesses. It wouldn't be proper for me to be to introduce myself ahead of her highnesses, says, says. That does seem right, I suppose, but in the meantime, Your Excellency doesn't sound right. I'm not a baron anymore, after all. Call me Mr. Rice. I try to keep up a happy front to hide my distress. What a tragedy that such a young girl is destined to grow up stiff and formal working in the oblivious garden. Worse, there is nothing I can do. I am also bound by the rules of the garden. In time, I will embody the very rules that are stealing her childhood. I should change the subject. Okay, should we talk about gardening? Should we talk about writing? Or should we talk about fencing? And hello, Totoro Becca. What do you guys think? Uh, Totoro Becca, please use the given names of the channel as opposed to a person's real name. I have asked you before. I won't ask you again. Flowers, writing, writing, fencing. Yep, yeah, that's not an option, unfortunately, Fat Frog. Okay, writing it is. Writing it is. Do you like to read? I try to start a casual conversation on a safe topic. Eww. I can't read, Your Excellency. She flushes. Whoops. Smooth around. Real smooth. I should have guessed. If she's been working as a maid for long, she must not have had the time to receive an education. I met a princess by the lake who seemed to enjoy writing. I found her diary and returned it to her. Did she show her gratitude by driving you away? She asked the question cautiously. 
How did you guess? That must... No, wrong voice. That must be Princess Liara. She isn't the most easygoing of the princesses in the garden. I can't help you there, I'm afraid. I don't know much about her. She smiles bitterly. She doesn't like me, you see. Princess Liara has a maid who cares exclusively for her. I do know that Liara, her highness, and Intelia, her highness, are often together. Well, at least she isn't cold towards everyone in the garden. Perhaps, oh, wrong voice, perhaps you just got off on the wrong foot. She can be very sensitive at times. She once rebuked me for standing too close to her diary. She smiles in an attempt to put on a good face, but her hands are trembling. What nightmares has Liara given to this poor child? It's okay, you don't have to be nervous. Look, you're spilling your tea. The child was so absorbed in her concern that she didn't notice the mess she'd made until I pointed out to her. At my words, she immediately put down her teacup and began cleaning the table. As she, she had a strong desire to please, I find it to be quite charming. I'm so sorry about this, Your Excellency. You are a responsible young mage. You make a refreshing cup of tea and bake a delicious cake. What do you have to be sorry for, besides continuing to call me Your Excellency? I thank you. I'm so glad you destroyed, uh, destroyed, I'm so glad you destroyed your dessert. I'm so glad you enjoyed your dessert. I'm, I'm out of practice of this, you can probably tell. We continue gossiping for a while. The sun... Having shifted positions in the sky, finally prompts her to check her timepiece. I apologise, Mr. Aurel Rice, but I need to leave now. You're so busy for one so young. It is my pleasure to serve the princesses. It is my honour. I know you will agree with me after you've met them tonight. Of course, I'm looking forward to the party. She ends our conversation and leaves me with one last smile. I'm alone again. At least I will have the rest of my cake to enjoy. The party. It might be fun tonight. All the princesses in one place. I've already met three of them. I hope I'll get to know them better tonight. Got item. Licorice. Okay, we got another achievement there. I don't know if you can see that. Everything you need. Three of 39. Okay. Gut item. Mint leaf. Everything you need. Four of 39. That's cheating. Okay. I'm assuming this hasn't crashed and it's just loading. Okay. The days in summer are, are long and hot. Dinner was postponed by half an hour to allow the temperature to drop before the gathering. That gives me plenty of time to make myself presentable. I may no longer be a baron, but I can still dress like one. The sun has set by the time I've finished preparing. The night sky is filled with stars, and the change in music was rather jarring. This has been my favourite view since I was a child. I used to gaze at the stars with my father, wondering if there was another world up there, and from that world another boy gazed back at me. Once, when I was in the army, I got separated from my troops. The North Star guided me safely back to them and then flew off. I prayed for my troops on the eve of my first battle under these stars. So many memories of a past I can never return to, a happier past, a past before I was disgraced. I am just a fool, stars. 
Sorrow wells up from deep inside my heart. Hello, Matt. All of my regrets come out to torture me anew whenever I am alone. Though this morning I was able to forget even my physical scars. Look at what a fool I'm turning into. I slap my face to shake off the melancholy and then look around and see a queue of princesses waiting to slap my face for me. I rapidly continue on my way.